Good morning. Good morning. Goedemorgen. I just said it in Dutch <clears throat> because Mar just joined. Good morning. A co Dutchy. Good morning. Will night will be nice that everybody drops the good morning is in his or her own language in the chat so we have an kind of overview of all the good mornings in all the different languages. Dobro jutro, buongiorno, okay, of course. Dobro rano, that's nice that you have dobro, but rano and jutro is very different. Ah, bonjour, ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mangvani, that's nice. Sounds a bit Italian. Buongiorno, Mangvani. <laughs> Mangavani. Shona, oh, that's nice. Buna di Minis, that's a long one. The Romanian. Can you pronounce it? Buna di Minyata. Hmm? Buna di Minyata. Diminiata. Ah, that's really nice. Hello, Luando. Luando is also sending her greetings, even though she is here today only as a uh, as one of the participants. <laughs> oh, nice. So, <laughs> yeah. I think we are probably the full group already, or maybe waiting for one one more person. So anytime again you, you want to start, uh, you, yes. you can go. Well, so great to see you again all. And um, as I said, everybody looks really, really fresh. I don't see any sleepy faces and no blue Mondays. Um, how's the weather with you? Let's do a short weather uh, um, check-in. Um, who is who is gray and rainy? Can I see hands? And I'm not, yeah, uh, I see one hand, gray and rainy, only one, one uh, half a bit. So I'm not talking about your mood, just outside. Uh, <laughs> and who is uh, Sunny? Ah, okay. Amsterdam is also, well, no, it was Sunny and it just not, or it's half, half. Yeah. It's um, it's fall. It's a bit of a fall in, in, in Amsterdam right now. Where is it fall? Other places that you feel, hey, it feels more like fall than summer? Okay. So, pretty summery though. Nice. Okay, well, today, um, perp, today's purpose is really to see where you are at um, since we met uh, at, at the live sessions in Milan and in Cambridge, when it comes to developing your prototype, um, having tested it with your, your, with your audience, um, things you have learned uh, so far. Um, and that also goes, we're gonna have two parts. We're first gonna start with, with um, yeah, the status uh, you're in uh, with prototyping, and then after a short break, 
we move into uh, uh, storytelling and, and uh, visualization of your story. Um, and if you, just to have kind of a general feel, um, to see whether you are happy at, at where you're at now with your prototype, because that's where you're starting. Um, if you are happy, raise your hands high. If you are rather happy, uh, put them next to your head. And if you are not that happy, uh, lower your hands so we don't see them. So let, let's grab a general impression where you're at. Oh, happy, happy, ha okay. Most, yeah, half, yeah. Oh, I see people just even cheering, so very happy. Okay, okay, okay. Well, overall, looks pretty good, I must say. So, but that's something we will discuss in the, the coming, um, you know, three quarters of an hour. Um, to really, and also, and, and I think the emphasis today is also in peer uh, exchange. So um, in a bit, we'll go into breakouts. Um, uh, in, in, in two teams, two different teams will be put in, in, in a separate breakout room. And I think it's really good for you then to discuss what you've been doing, what you have learned, what you might have been you know, stumbled upon or or what were kind of uh, yeah barriers um, in 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 moving forward. Uh, so and then you know after having that uh, a breakout, we'll go back into plenary and and uh, get some um, responses, get some insights. Those who are willing to to speak out um, and. Um, yeah, so before we go into those breakouts, um, let's have a quick poll to see uh, what you have been doing. Obviously, I've also been looking at the folders um, on the drive, so I, I have a pretty good impression, but it's good to have this sense of, yeah, what have you been actively doing based on those key elements of the prototyping uh, module. Um, so um, I'd say, uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, here are basically three questions. Have you developed one or more prototypes uh, since the first shoe box prototype? Have you used a test card uh, with your audience? Uh, and have you used the learning card to capture what you've been testing? Still waiting for some uh, votes, I guess. Yes. <clears throat> well, this looks pretty good, I must say. 85% did work on a prototype, developed a prototype, many a few. Um, a minority said no. Then uh, also quite a nice, decent amount, like 70% worked with the test card. And of course, it also makes sense. Um, let me see the, the, I have to scroll down to check the learning card. Well, it does make sense that, um, the majority haven't used the learning card yet because that's the last uh, stage. So it, it makes sense, I think uh, kind of logical, uh, but still uh, a reasonable amount of 43 did do that. So I'm super curious to see what you have learned from that. Um, but I think it's instead of, of, of sharing that in a plenary, 
I, I'd say let, let's go into those breakouts, uh, discuss your most important insights. Um, and we have uh, how much time for that? I think 15 minutes. Is that right? Inka? Yeah. So, yes, yeah. Yes, we Without have further ado, let's go. And because this is a bit shorter, so we can go, uh, maybe we'll have a bit more time. Okay, let's go into the breakout rooms. Yeah, are we all back or still waiting for some people? We're all back. Yes. Okay, okay. So, um, if you kind of bring down the, uh, the prototyping and testing to the essence, it's all about the assumptions you have or had when you started the project and whether those assumptions prove, uh, were proven to be true or were questioned um, and uh, whether you changed based on your prototype and testing your assumptions. I think this is really the essence. So it will be great to share some insights on that. Um, um, I just heard from the one of the conversations I was in uh, with the feminist library in Tirana. Anna may, may want to share something about that, which was really about that part of the assumptions were kind of proven to be true, but also new uh, needs were uncovered that were not foreseen and that actually move the project forward. And, and um, or I'm already summarizing it for you, sorry, Anna. But I <laughs> no, no, it was, it was great about... actually listening, listening it from you, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was a lovely process. I mean, we initially started with the assumption that the Tirana Feminist Library would be a hub offering books, titles, um, like for everyone to to better understand and to elevate in theory, like titles based on feminism, uh, gender studies, uh, but also like um, eco-feminism. So this sort of um, human rights uh, direction. And initially, we tested it with the community, with uh, the feminist collective, the LGBTQ Alliance of uh, Albania, and with the the uh, eco uh, groups in Tirana. And actually, we learned from the um, the cards and from the whole process of like co-designing. We learned that uh, their main need was actually to have the space as a bridge of communicating with audiences that they have hadn't reached before. So the whole uh, the, the the their main concern was of course like having a safe space where to gather and to, dis and to discuss and have talks but at the same time it was like to have this space in order to communicate with everyone that wasn't informed with these ideas and try to to enlarge and the mm -hmm. the community and that's where we actually understood that some of the, the the programs and the talks and and everything that we had already like constructed in in our minds had to kind of like be changed but be changed in a way to include everyone so it had to be co-designed with everyone and maybe to try and squeeze in also topics and discussions that weren't mainly based on those like very small maybe areas but expand a little further in order for 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 the feminist library tirana to serve as like a meeting place for everyone so we actually understood that more than a safe space they needed a space as a common ground to yes, yeah. to enlarge and, and the process has been very fun i have to say yeah. <laughs> but it's really a great insight uh somebody else want to share uh the journey and and what they have learned Maybe we could. Uh, I hope that you can hear us uh, properly. Okay, thank you. And uh, our project is uh, Freed Yourself. We are in Rome in the Sapienza University. Our project is a very a focused project on the women 
hosted in a shelter house. And these women were victims of human trafficking. So what we uh, want to do is, since they are already involved in some uh, um, learning activities and the job training activities uh, uh, managed by the association that uh, is our community, the association that... Uh, the association is the partner. The association that manages this house is part of, this, uh, of our project. And um, so what we want to do is to provide uh, these women uh, other activities uh, uh, in order to uh, make them feel uh, as a real part of the society. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we started with some ideas about what we could do. And then we learned that it's important also to hear what they want to do and mm -hmm. what they feel when we say we want that you engage a real dialogue with the society. And also because these women come from different parts of the world, and some actions, some words, some way of doing uh, have different meaning in different countries. Mm -hmm. So we have learned that we have rescheduled our activities, but also uh, we have learned that we need to explain every single time what we want to do and the reasons behind that. Mm. in order to avoid any kind of uh, misunderstandings. And now and things are uh, this, working. This, this, this work that uh, we, we, we do with the, the women is um, very important for our library service in the university. For example, we, we, uh, we learn to hear the, the need of, of the, our communities, uh, academic community. For example, we, um, we, uh, we did um, uh, a core um, class for, um, for uh, um, a big, um, class for, um, for change. change our libraries in a safe zone. For um, L B uh, L L J G T class person, and uh, and uh, this is the very um, for 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 us uh, the very important of this project that uh, we uh, uh, thanks uh, uh, a lot the European challenge that this uh, the the change of. Uh, uh, of me, of, uh, this yeah. is, uh, I think the the very big, uh, um, very big challenge, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. for us. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you for sharing. Who wants to share more of their what they've learned and and whether their assumption uh, proven to be right or had to be changed? along the way. I can share a bit. Yes, please. Um, one of the assumptions uh, I uh, realized in Cambridge was that um, just for doing things, just because we were doing workshops and activities, people would feel that the library is a warm place for them to be, you know, that they would be doing things, they will be here. Uh, and also uh, many projects that work with young people were very inspiring. So I took this idea to talk with the librarian. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm Sarah from Portugal <laughs> and I'm mm -hmm. from the, the community group uh, about uh, doing some, a process, a more participative process with uh, teenagers so that we could understand how can the library be, be a more uh, inviting uh, place that they feel where they can go to work, to be together. Mm -hmm. And 
and so we we didn't uh, have this activity in our work plan, but we are working on inviting um, students from different schools uh, on around Povo. They are working with the Eco Schools. It's like a national program. And so inviting them to do an exchange about what they are doing in, in their own schools and trying to make the literacy club that we created with this project a place where they can uh, do things, but not in our terms, but on their terms. Mm -hmm. So as part of this program, of this uh, activity we will do in September, uh, there's a, a part of the program where we don't know what is going to happen because it's them. We are inviting them to do a talk, a workshop, to invite someone. It's them who, is, who, are, who are going to decide. And also, in the end, we want to have their feedback about how could the library become a library that for them it's a place to, to be, to work, to live. Mm -hmm. And and then delivering this to the municipality in the hope that this could open a door to create a long-term plan to adapt uh, a space of the library just for teenagers. So that's one of the things. We, we never thought about this. And I think it was because we were more focused on the ideas we have for the project and yeah. what what we want to deliver for the community. Uh, and not so much um, the community itself. Yeah. So even even the first po poster that we made for the first workshop we done in in March, it was much focused on the book and what was going to be discussed. And now we really are putting the people, you know, in the posters and the way we communicate the talks and the workshops it's much more simple much more mm -hmm. focused and we added uh, one or two questions uh, and a language that it's much more close to the daily lives of people and not so much on our idea of what we want to accomplish with the project so yeah I, yeah. I, I I don't know if if we really test it because it depends on how everything goes, mm -hmm. but uh, it really made a difference on how we communicate the project and how we we really make a participative process that it's not having a script and asking people to fit in on yeah. it, but but really taking the risk of yeah, having great. them building the script. Oh, great! Thank you. Um, we need to take a break now. I, I mean, it's great to talk to hear more, but we need to have a break now. Um, now for eight minutes, um, and and come back here at uh, Inca. Yeah, uh, come back at oh, eleven fifty-two, something like that. So yeah, we really need to start yeah. at eleven yeah, fifty-five. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. meet here in ten minutes, the most. So guys, if everyone could turn your cameras back on so we can start the, the second part so we don't run over time, that would be wonderful. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Perfect. And thanks for being so yeah, on time. Yeah, again, perfect timing. <laughs> Everybody has really had a quick coffee or a quick snack. And um, Okay, so we are now moving uh, from prototyping and, and really testing and challenging your own assumptions to the importance of telling your story. Uh, in, in the live sessions um, we had in Cambridge and in Milan, um, we talked about um, how crucial um, telling a story and, and visualizing your story is to develop it further, to create uh, uh, an audience, to, to create fans to, to follow you on your mission. Um, and a lot of people, as, as we had this motto saying, be good and tell it, um, it's really about being more extrovert, being able to convey why your story is important and why people should follow you on, on your journey. Um, we worked on a manifesto as being kind of the start of, of a story. Um, we talked about 
um, that in a way your initiative needs to become a brand uh, and not so much brand in terms of uh, the commercial meaning of it, but really in terms of being a recognizable face. Uh, you know, that they, they, these what we learn from brands is that they are very rec recognizable and uh, it's a kind of a portrait of, 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 of a product of a service. So it's really, um, yeah, very crucial, uh, even in an early stage, to work on that. Um, so again, we're going to have um, a series of breakouts in a bit in which you can share your, your progress, maybe your struggles. Um, then we'll go back into plenary, but I also um, looked at um, what you have done so far, what you have uploaded on um, the Drive, the Google Drive, and I made some observations uh, in general that I think are important to address and also some tips to move forward at the end. I don't want to start with that, um, but let's start with this poll, the short, small, the, the, the mini poll that we did in the beginning, which is really about getting a sense of um, whether you have worked on the different parts of, um, of story development. So let's go. So the first question is whether you have elaborated uh, your manifesto since that uh, short session, the uh, live session. Whoa, bang, 100%. Um, then 100% on the cover story. Well, wow, that's pretty amazing. Oh, not, not yet. Okay, I have to be patient. Um, yes, and working on visualization. So let's give it some more time. Still have some people to go. Yeah, I think we are pretty well done with this. Um, wow, so it is great to see that that work on a manifesto gave, gave you joy and you found that important because 100% did that. So that's um, pretty amazing, I must say. And but also the cover story, uh, a really large amount, 88% did that. Again, it's, it's a great tool to kind of imagine that if a newspaper or a magazine would talk about your initiative, in what way would they talk about it? Which kind of image might be a part of that? Um, now, then, then I have just one additional one just to see hands on that, uh, which is. Have you experimented? We had this masterclass on AI visualization. Um, can I see hands of those who did experiment with some of the tools that were offered in there? Can I see hands? Yeah. 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 Okay, so still quite a lot did not do it, which is fine, although it is, in a way, a tool to democratize, to democratize creativity when you feel you might not have the skills as a designer or a photographer or an illustrator. Um, so moving forward, I do encourage you to play with it. Um, and, and not be, uh, it becomes more intuitive by the day. So it's not about writing the perfect prompt. Um, it's really about starting a dialogue, start trying something, seeing what happens then, and then changing your your um, yeah message or your uh, instructions. And uh, it's just a, a lot of fun uh, to play with it. Okay. Um, but again, great to see everybody worked on a manifesto. It's really, that's the beginning of any movement. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go into the breakout rooms now. All back now. Um, okay, so let's um, share some stories, some insights of your conversations. Um, I just, uh, last room I jumped in, 
were already two such a great examples of how uh, the teams worked on bringing their story to life. Let's say that because you know, manifesto is words on paper that helps you kind of go go to the essence of your mission. But then about a story that you want to share. It is something that has to be visual, tangible, hearable. And and maybe um, just because I was excited to hear uh, two teams talking about that, uh, maybe gets short, but let's keep it short. Let's keep it to a minute uh, 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 telling it, because otherwise we have too, not enough space for others. So, uh, Mirna, do you want to say something about something you learned and, and, and already kind of um, used? In, in yes. Your yes. Uh, last time when when we uh, did this um, exercise on pitching uh, during the storytelling uh, meeting, uh, I got the the feedback that it would be lovely to hear uh, sentences from the stories of the women because I work with stories with women, um, and um, it was from Manuela. Uh, I think, right? yeah, um, and I I um, I used this in a speech I did uh, during an exhibition on this project. So I just had a little speaker, and I edited from the the recorded story one minute of sentences from the women, and it worked so well. Uh, the the whole. Um, uh, everybody was was really silent. It was a really beautiful silence, and um, and I thought it, this was such a good feedback because you, I we really engaged everyone in uh, the stories of the women just by letting their voice be heard uh, in a, a short way. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Good. Oh. Um. Agnes, can, can you share what you just uh, yes. told? Yes. So, uh, with Elisabetta, we worked for an entire afternoon with the AI image generator, and we realized that this image, conceptualizing one sentence in our manifesto, is about uh, giving the opportunities for these women to breathe right. again. Uh -huh. again. And uh, after realizing some images, so we voted inside our group to uh, choose the better, uh, choose the best. Then Elisabeth, uh, walking around, uh, as, uh, has had the capability to uh, find on a wall uh, this image, you see the graffiti behind, this is a kind of uh, uh, black, black Mary. You see, and here there is uh, I can breathe. Actually, this is uh, I can't breathe, but we canceled the letter T. And so we make I can breathe. So we decided to use this as our um, oh, okay. Yes, visual image. And so the inspiration comes from our work on AI, but then the image is comes from the real life. I think this is a great example of it's uh, it's about a tool, a tool that enables you to to visualize your idea. And if then that helps you find it in the real world, yeah, that's perfect. Um, anybody else who wants to share how they worked or brought, worked on bringing their story to life and what they have learned? I found the um, cover story exercise really, really useful. We ended up kind of developing it into a press release and it was really successful. We got um, a photographer and a reporter from the Irish Times to come wow. to a little community festival. We got a um, sound recordist from the National Broadcaster, RTE, to come along. So, like, we didn't expect this to be successful at all. But I think because we had the framework to refine it into the sort of language and the sound bites that they really want and are familiar with, it um, it worked. So, thanks. 
That's really great. That's such a dream result, right? It's just having yeah. really express understanding and yeah. We Perfect. got a photograph in the um, Irish Times the following day, a picture of our parade. So oh. fabulous. Can you share? Did you put that picture in the folder? Uh, I will. I'll upload it, actually. Oh, that's perfect. That That's probably your image, right? <laughs> oh, that's really wonderful. Somebody else. Yeah, I can maybe tell you uh, something from our experience. Yes, please. Yes. So the assumption was that the act of creation can be used in a variety of situations. For instance, bringing together different generations or different social groups as well. And uh, we use it as a part of audiovisual school. Uh, we invited teachers, librarian teachers from the high school from the region to make kind of workshop uh, how to use the podcast uh, podcast idea in their own daily professional activities. They are working with uh, with children, so we we were doing small uh, small podcast, also with very simple uh, applications, and uh, so every actually everybody can use it. You don't need to be high professional uh, to, to work with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, so with this creation, because it's very creative, actually, you can give uh, some uh, will to work for children, for very young people, for older people. Also, there was a group of older women with, uh, with kind of difficulty in their daily life, like illness and death of somebody from the family. So this woman also tried to write their own scenario of their own life. Mm. Uh, so this is the story in the story, <laughs> inside the story. So it was our uh, experience. Great, great. Um, we are already going towards um, 1230 and we have some minutes left. Um, uh, I would love to hear more, but maybe if you have you know things to share. You know, also can you can mail it to me, or if you have an, uh, uh, some more questions, do mail. Um, but I want to um, kind of close by um, sharing some observations of things I found, um, especially related to uh, the visuals and the key visual, um, and give you some tips uh, because, um, as I told you, we also work towards a publication of this project. Uh, and therefore, it's crucial to have good images, or at least, you know, one great image of each. So I want to share my screen and let me see. A second. Okay, so some tips on, on that. Um, not for Robin, because he already has even a press photographer doing some images for free, but then you may be looking at, at that image through this lens. Um, so um, what we need for a publication is at least one visual that captures your initiative in, in a compelling way. We already shared some of the dimensions, four by three, as high resolution as possible, uh, at least 300 pixels. So we can also show it big. And this is also really important. It has to be, the image has to be clear and simple enough to be also clear in a thumbnail. And with a thumbnail, of course, we mean a smaller image, for instance, on a website, on the website of the ECF that you click on and you then go to the, the, the project. And if it has too many details or it's unclear, um, you know, people might not be drawn into even clicking on it to see more. Another thing that's really important to remember, and, um, and I think we already conveyed that, but looking at what's in there, no text or logos in the visual. 
because then it becomes unclear. You have a headline, you have a title, you have more enough text. So try to see a visual as being something that is stands on its own without any logos of each organization in there. So some of the observations I made looking at the G Drive folder, uh, I see a lot of photos of people in libraries. Well, that makes sense because we are in libraries, but frankly, it's a lot of those pictures are really standard and it, it, it just not catches your attention. So if you catch people in the library, go to much more in close, the, uh, a close up or something that is lit in an interesting way. Because, oh, you know, it's not enough to have a standard iPhone or a, a smartphone picture of a library setting. It's in itself not really interesting enough. Um, we also see that some images have too much details in it. Uh, so there is not enough focus. Um, too many people, for instance, uh, in one image, or too many drawings. Um, obviously, also stumble on, on, on wrong dimensions. Um, people are showing vertical images or horizontal too wide. If we need, to, it's a pity because then we need to crop it for publication, and some of them won't uh, have a the uh, um, an appropriate. Uh, it will be hard to make a good crop. So really look at those dimensions. Um, some of you also dropped multiple images in a folder. Um, it's hard and don't, please don't make us choose from a lot of pictures. So choose at least, you know, maximum of three that you think are equally useful or if you are very, um, you know, determined about it, and you say, okay, this is the, the, the best image, just drop one. Uh, you know, not now, we, we have still time, and Inca will get back to you on the ultimate deadlines when we need stuff for the publication. Um, so um, I'll go quite uh, fast through this. Some handle, you know, when, when we talk about a visual, it can be a photo. It can be an illustration, it can be a graphic, and it can be a, a, type of, a, a typography, but not a lot of text. One word, for instance. It can be an icon or it can be a combination. So this is a, a, an, an image that you see immediately is compelling, which tells a story, because again, it's about your story and how the image captures your story. This is a classic, you know, posters are the one kind of one Im examples, people are looking for posters in films for that one image that is captures the film in one image. So this is a very famous one for Jaws back in the day. This is for a political party that just uses two words. This is a graphic that immediately says a lot. Also this, this is an icon that also is very clear in what it means, what it wants to say. This is a combination of illustration and one word. So again, it's not about a logo or a lot of text, one word or two words maximum. And then remember, um, it's about your story. So it's really, what is it that captures your story best? And then execution comes next. So uh, more, it's kind of a, uh, to keep in mind, make it real, make it scary, make it funny, make it absurd, make it critical, make it painful, make it honest, make it emotional. Those are things to help you to have convey an emotion that you get this attention. So this is a very famous picture of Muhammad Ali. Yeah, it, yes, it is a portrait of a person, but the fact that he puts his fist forward is both his his, his work, you know, his, his trade, but also black power, which he also stood for. Another image of a poster. This is a meme, an example of a meme. Yes, there is a bit text, but you know, a meme has very strong 
funny, sometimes painful uh, uh, text in it. Another example, yes text, but so powerful that it stands on itself. Okay, and last but not least, if you use photography and you make yourself, you work with a photographer, you know, um, make sure that the conditions are right uh, or enhance it. So this is a bad example. This is a good example. Also this, you know, if you have backlight, uh, too much backlight, you get a dark picture. This is also about the composition uh, of a photo in a library. Um, so this is quite a general picture. What does stand out is the person in red in the middle. That already helps, but it's quite a standard picture. Yeah. While this is if you have a workshop or something and there is an activity, you see that the, the point of view of the, the photographer is on the table. It shows action. Uh, Yes, it says workshop. There might be 50 people in a workshop, but you don't need to have all 50 in there. This is a great uh, example of a, of a very nice composition, or this is in a kind of extraordinary composition that really makes the, the visual strong. And this is some people kind of jump using, uh, um, you know, get images, stock images, you know completely fake we need to have a real emotion real people in it see action see movement okay so this is basically some of the tips i want to i wanted to share with you um about working on your visual that will really catch uh, and grab people's uh, attention. Um, are there, I think, um, yeah, Canva, good good example to work with Canva. Um, I think we need to go to Inca for some um, practical um, points and some of the planning points. Yes, uh, only very few things again for, for this follow-up session. Uh, first of all, Sarah and maybe also other are asking that if you could give them a direct feedback to to the pictures or the visuals they uploaded, maybe yes. you can also send me one email with all the comments and I can share it with the participants, whatever works the best for you. But yeah, it would I, be great if, yeah, if you I can will comment do that. directly. I did, it for a few, yeah. I did it already for a few. Uh, but when I do, did, did that, I made a lot of general observations, yes. uh, which were what I shared now. And and um, yeah. and possibly, again, if you could share with me this presentation, I think it yes. would be great if I can send it to everyone so so they can Absolutely. go through through the points once again. Um, so thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, as you know, the deadline already passed, but since the publication will be quite a major thing in this overall program, we really want it to be the best. <laughs> so there are still a couple of days uh, that we can spare for you to upload the best picture possible. So we will get back to you as soon as possible with the presentation and some feedback, which is um uh, uh, directed to each of your presentation and then we will ask you yeah it's seven like for sure till the before the end of the month we need to have all of it uh as it will be published but yeah the sooner the better and there's one more thing i wanted to uh remind you that if someone wants to bring their community partner for the amsterdam summit you still have a couple of days to submit your application for the active participation in the uh, in the amsterdam summit uh, you all received or the librarians received the uh, briefing on the amsterdam summit and everything is there also the link for the uh the link where you can register for the active participation. So uh, please go for it. The deadline is on the 20s. Of course, if you don't want to, or if you don't have time, you are not pressured to do that. 
uh, yeah, thanks again. Thanks uh, to everyone. Uh, I don't know, Dagan, if there is anything else. Um, I wish we had mind. more, much more time. It's such a, we talked about it, so it's so difficult to balance. I mean, you are all very busy, have a busy schedule, and not only this project, but I don't know how many projects. And uh, hearing some of your insight, it feels like I want to know, hear more. And uh, well, so if you have questions to me, uh, I will respond, give feedback on um especially the visuals on the drive um if there are things you want to you know discuss reach out to me send me an email and um and i will do my best to answer you as soon as i can yes yes i will share with everyone the presentation and then with those who then i will share one general email with those who have submitted a uh, visual visualization that is correct and saying like thanks you did great yeah. job that's it and yeah. to those who need to work on it a bit more i will get back to you uh personally okay or dagan <laughs> but one of us for sure so thanks once again thank you everyone for participating bye. always bye good day. to see you <laughs> thanks <laughs> million nice cheers day. bye <laughs> thanks bye. Robin. bye thank you bye, bye. thank you bye. 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 thank you Bye. Bye. Bye.